All right, so we are ready to go for uh, Rutgers post game show following their loss, at least covered, uh, which is the, the only the only saving grace for this football game, Richie, because uh, if if any of the viewers out there have been waiting for us to or at least, you know, I, I know I can. I don't know about you. I know you're a little bit more professional than me at times, but if they've been waiting for us to vent, this is certainly the show. So how's it going? Uh, it's going good. We actually did a live stream during the show uh, with Peacock, oh. so it was kind of cool. It, it came out really well. Uh, we had over 150-something, almost 160 people at one point, uh, but like a consistent over 100 people watching. So It was a reaction show? Uh, no, we just kind of, um, we just, I guess his reaction, like we had us and me and Mike in the bottom corner. It was a test run to see if we could do this going forward and uh, ended up working really, really well. Um, it's on playback TV, it's called. So uh, we'll kind of see if we could do that more in the future. It was pretty cool though. It ended up working out really well. So yeah, so reaction we, video saw, would actually be a good thing too. That would yeah, yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah, they saw me and Mike yelling quite a bit. So yeah. uh, Mike, Mike more so than me, but uh, I can imagine. Yeah. It was uh, it was it was something. Yeah, there's a lot to but, yell about as far as this game is concerned. No question yeah, about it. There's no kidding. Uh, let's always again just want to let everybody know uh, we appreciate your uh, questions and comments, uh, and you can do that obviously in the chat area. If you want to, um, uh, if you want to, uh, my my uh, old radio days would say sponsor, but that's not the case. But if you would like to uh, donate to the show, you can do that as well in the thanks uh, icon, or of course you guys know how to do it, and we appreciate that as well. All right, so let's uh, l let's talk about how this game unfolded. First of all, it, it's interesting. The, the first drive of the game, the, the, the first several passes, it just seemed like to me the strategy for Shiano was, all right, well, let's see if our, our front line can get to Mordecai without us pressuring him because there was no pressure at all on Mordecai, and he just kind of down the field pretty easily. But then he put the pressure on. And as soon as he put the pressure on and blitzed him there a couple of times, that stopped the drive, they kicked the field goal. And um, by the way, they got they got away with some really awful pass interference call oh, yeah. on Melton. I don't know what that was. Mm -hmm. uh, but we got away with it, you know, um, because they went three and out after that, I believe. But it yeah. started, but then we got the ball back and, and went three and out, and that started the three and outs. And I have to say this, Richie, because I was watching the Oklahoma-Texas game as well. And I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say this, that I believe Oklahoma is able to run like three plays to every one that we do, uh, or maybe even before we get the ball back. Wimsett sits there. For, for almost like forever before he even is ready. And I know it's, I guess it's the strategy that it's the way they want to run their offense, but it's, I don't know how you develop a rhythm that way. Yeah, it's, it's definitely an old school offense. Um, it's, it's a run it down the gut type of offense. And that's kind of what Greg likes to do. I think there's no question about that. He wants to make it old school football, punch you in the gut over and over, get those five yard gain, five yard gain, four yard gain, five yard gain. Um, and just run out the clock at that point, just bleed the clock almost. But, uh, yeah, it's, I, I don't know if it's a successful recipe for winning in today's day and age because it's just yeah. not possible. But you, then, then again, I see teams like in the Big Ten, like uh, like Penn State does it pretty well. Michigan, Minnesota did it pretty well with Chicago oh, yeah. last year. Yeah. Mind you, different running back, different O-line, a lot of differences there. But, yeah, no, uh, the game in general, they they got pretty – that the, what do you call it? The, um Pass interference, what the hell was that? I don't know what kind of call that was. But like you said, luckily they didn't end up just yeah. forcing a field goal there. So that was big. Um, then the next three, the next four possessions, punt, punt, field goal, miss, fumble, like they just gave them every opportunity to come yes. back. And the offense just couldn't do anything at yeah. all. They had one play, That's which was the Langan 30-yard pass to midfield. <laughs> and I think, was that yeah. it, by the way, for tight ends again? Did, was there any other tight end receptions no, in the he, game? Yeah, he, he had one more later on, which I think was actually for 17 yards or something like that. It was, it was a big play. It was a big chunk play out of him. Uh, but that was only two passes to uh, – only two, right? Yeah, only two targets, two passes. So, yeah, yeah. it was only two to the tight end, which, again, they don't use the tight ends at all, which is a little odd. Especially for a guy who has an issue continuously with accuracy down the field. And if you have yeah. accuracy issues down the field, that's what tight ends are for. So I don't get it either. I just don't. 
my, my biggest gripe with this offense is Ian Strong should have been starting from day yes. one. Yes. Like, like, it makes no sense. And I, I said this on our, our live stream show too. Like Ian Strong was the best wide receiver in training camp. He was yeah. the best wide receiver in the scrimmages. Then the season comes and he gets that little toe tap and touchdown in the corner of the end zone against Northwestern. And then you don't see him for the rest of the game. And then he gets one 20 yard play in the next game, one 19 yard play the next game, one 18 yard play the next game. And then that's it. Like he gets like no snaps. And then today he comes in late, what, yeah. third quarter, fourth quarter? He gets four for 45 and a touchdown. Yeah. And he could have had two touchdowns. Play, if play Williams had to throw the ball, the guy like skied like seven oh, feet yeah. and he couldn't get the ball. I mean, how high can you throw the ball? Yeah, yeah. That's that's another issue. We've seen him. He's so inaccurate at times, but he's so accurate at times. He throws an inaccurate inaccurate pass, then it's all of a sudden a dart down the middle, and it's like, oh my god, like what, what what's going on here? Like I I gotta fix it. And I don't. I know people are saying his completion percentage is better, and yes, it kind of is. But he's also <laughs> couldn't be any worse. Well, yeah, he plays, but he hasn't played really good comp until today in Michigan, yeah. obviously. Yeah. And Michigan kind of took his lunch money, and then today it was forty six percent completion percentage. So it's not like he's much better accuracy wise. And this is year three. This isn't even year two because he did enroll early in September That's of right. uh, what was it, twenty twenty one. Um, so this is year three for Gavin. Yes, he has two years of eligibility left, but how much more accurate can he get? Like, I know it's year one or Kirk, but like something's got to change or something's got to give eventually. He had a 5.2 average, which look, Mordecai wasn't all that much better, but no. that's just, that's at this day and age, uh, it's, uh, he, it's, I don't even know. So his longest, what was his longest? What was his longest? Uh, he threw. Oh, he threw that the, the one to Langan that we that we talked about. Uh, yeah, Langan was a. And you, mind you, Langan ended up taking that an extra what fifteen yards or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's true. It was like so. fifteen and then fifteen. Yeah, I can say that. Yeah. Sure. So he did have a twenty to Washington and a twenty six to, to Jackson. But again, those were later in the game. Mm -hmm. And then um, yeah, it's just the inaccuracy down the field. Or during those three and outs, were killing him. And it's like, if you're not going to be accurate, then, uh, I mean, you got to run another play. You can't keep chucking the ball down the field, down the corner of the sidelines when you can't even give the receivers an opportunity. Because really, a couple of those times, if he just gave the receiver an opportunity to come down with it, A, you might get pass interference, or B, the guy might actually come down with the ball. Yeah. That's the other thing. There was a couple of plays, uh, especially to Jaquay Jackson, who he targeted, uh, I think, a team high nine times today. There was a couple where, like, uh, he just he's throwing the wrong way to Jackson. Jackson's going to his left, waiting for the ball, and then all yeah. of a sudden he has to turn around completely. And he made the catch on the one, but on the other, it was a complete, incomplete pass. So it's just like he, he has to be better with accuracy. Um, I just don't – I don't know if he sees the field either. Like, on that interception, the pick six on the goal line, which oh. – Stupid play call, number one. True. Um, but it's the same exact play call they did against Virginia Tech. And it's like you don't think they watched the tape against Virginia Tech? Of course they did. <laughs> like – um, same exact play call, same exact throw, same exact player at, at, at wide receiver and Christian Dremel. And the DB just read it like a book, and that was it. But Gavin doesn't read the field. He just looks at Dremel the whole time and then just doesn't zone off of him. And it's like, all right, well, there you go. There goes the ball the entire other way for 90-something yards. That was the game. So. We all knew it was the game. There was no way they were coming back after that. It could have mm -hmm. been 10-3. to 3, could have been 10-7. to 7. And really um, – after that, Wisconsin had one other drive. That was it. Yeah. That's all they did. Yep. So it wasn't like their offense improved at all. I mean, I don't look at this Wisconsin team after this game and go, oh, wow, they're, they're going to be good. They're really, they, they look like the same offense that they've looked like all year. They just do not look in sync. They don't have the players for it. This is just going to be the way they're going to play this year, and they're going to take advantage against teams like Rutgers. And that's yeah. sad to say. No, the funny part is, is like that, that's the swing right there. That six point intercept or pick six is just a complete swing of the game. And that, that was it. But this Wisconsin team, I don't think they're anything special. I think they have a decent run game. I don't think there's a question about that between Braylon Allen and the, the former fullback actually ran really well in uh, Acker. something. Acker. Yeah. I don't know what his first name is. Jack Jackson. Uh, yeah. Jackson Acker looked pretty good. Um, and then they, they just kind of picked you apart at the end of the game when it came to throwing the ball. Um, they used your tight end more than anything. Um, and I know Rucky did end up having that intercept or the, the fumble and then Ashcraft had the one touchdown, I believe. Um, it's, it's not a crazy good Wisconsin team. Like no. this was very no. winnable and it was winnable throughout the first 
what, one, two, three, four, five, five drives, even six drives. You yeah. even had a shot in the second half to win, but or not to win, but to uh, come back. And it's just punt, 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 punt. One punt was for 37 yards. Yeah, 38 that was, yards, yeah, that was like bad. That. It was just a lot of a lot of big question marks, and and I see people in the chat saying like, what if Ian Strong's not a good blocker? What if he's not like a good route runner? There's proof right there. He's a good route runner. He knows what he's doing. I know he's a freshman, but he's better than what you have out there. <laughs> That's I, true. So I I don't get it. He's got to play more. Yeah, it's there. It's like they're babying him, and I yeah, I see this a lot. I mean, and, and I'm not surprised about Chiano. Chiano. That's why we were kind of shocked a little bit with the, wow, we actually made a decision on Wimsat early in the off season. He's, <laughs> but then again, maybe it wasn't surprising because Wimsat was actually the veteran quarterback in the room. And that's the thing with some of these coaches is that they get too, too much into the veteran thing. And that's, that's the thing that we don't know is that say we're not around. I, I, I learned this a while back and that's like, you're, we're not, you're not around these guys the way they are. They're around them all the time. And mm -hmm. there's a personal kind of thing that they develop, especially with veterans, guys that give all their time and dedication and they work hard and they deserve it. But then we what we see on the field, we're like, well, these guys aren't really all that good. But until someone mm -hmm. does come along and actually prove it or again, I, th I think there's that veteran thing of yeah, we're going to play Washington over strong because Washington is a veteran and he's done this and he's done that and he deserves it. And, and that's the kind of thing that just drives you crazy sometimes because you're right. It's just ridiculous. How strong is not out there with the ones from the first drive of the game makes no sense. Yeah. And it, I think, I don't think if he's not out there this uh, as a starter next week, or at least playing significant snaps next week, the, the fan base is going to be pissed. Like, and rightfully so. Uh, Isaiah Washington hasn't done much of anything during his, what, one, two, three, four, five years at Rutgers. And Nothing. that's no offense to him. He just hasn't done anything. He's not the, he's not that player. Yeah. He's had opportunities. He's looked good in garbage time. Don't get me wrong. He's got like 180 yards in 2021, but most of that comes in garbage time. So I, I don't know. And then uh, I see people in the chat also complaining about Jaquay Jackson. He, they're like, he's coming up from D2 to D1. That man's your best receiver by far. So if he's coming up from D2 and D1 yeah. and doing that, like yeah. that's saying something about your wide receiver yes. group. So. Yes, yes. But I, I, I think next week, without a doubt, you have to go Jaquay on one side. Um, I, Ian Strong on the other, Christian Dremel in the middle in the slot, and just just rock with that group. It's a good group. You got to put them both out there at the same time. Sure, would have been nice if they would have done something like that in a game like this, a game against a team that uh, that's what you want to see. You want to see some a wrinkle against when you're the dog, and you got to do something to win the game. And uh -huh. yeah, it, 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 and and then we talk. So we can talk about the whims that hit. So he gets hit. And I, first of all, what are they doing picking that up? The guy <laughs> hits him in the head with his elbow, and that's on replay? That That's not – okay, I, I don't even care what you call, but you know what? You don't have to throw the guy out of the game, but how in the world is that not 15 yards? The guy is, was taken out of the game. Isn't that proof I, enough that there's something wrong with him? Did you hit him wrong in the head? Yeah, if that's not targeting, I don't know what is because they call some crazy soft targeting calls in college football nowadays, even in the NFL. And that clear as day hits them in the back of the helmet. Like that's that's the dangerous, most dangerous spot to hit someone probably. Um, it's it, that was a clear as day targeting call, and they did call it technically. They did, and then they reviewed it and then picked it back up, and it yeah. just made zero sense to me. I don't understand how you can even go back on your word on that one, but. Um, that should have been out of the game, and that's that's their best defender too. So in a uh, war, war, yeah, that's probably why right can't take but the best that, defender out at Wisconsin. Absolutely crazy, and then to put him back in, I was a little shocked they put him back in. I I can't imagine that not being a concussion, based on the fact he got up, stumbled, and literally fell back to the ground. So yeah. I was a little shocked that they even let him go back in. I don't know what the exact ruling is, how it works. I know you got to evaluate him for a concussion, and I guess if he's not concussed in that tent when you're evaluating him, then he's allowed to go back in. But when he stumbles like that, that's that tells me something's something's going on there. Yeah. Like I, I would just I'm not saying the medical staff is sure. wrong in any means, but that's just shocking to me. And then the game was kind of out of reach already. It was 17 nothing. They got the ball back. I believe they did they score on that next drive. Yeah, that's the one. No, they scored on the drive. That's yes. the one okay. where he comes into the game, Snyder. And he goes, first pass is what, for like 15 yards? And he throws the touchdown. And you're like, 
okay, well, you know what? This is the perfect excuse, Shiano, where your quarterback's hurt. Simon just came in, and he's obviously playing his worst game of the year. So just sit him. Let Simon, who just engineered, I know it was only about half, you know, 40 yards, but Wimsett couldn't do that the whole game. And he did it two passes, touchdown. Let give the kid a shot to just play a few, you know, a quarter or two just to see. And he didn't do it. He had he had a perfect excuse to take Wimsett out of the game, out of a bad game, and not say anything like, well, it was a quick hook. I don't believe in you. He, he could have just said, look, you know, you're hurt. I'm not going to take any chances. Obviously, yeah. if he's lighting up the scoreboard, I'm a little bit more, all right, get back in. You know, I'll do whatever you can to get back in. But when he's playing so bad, it was a perfect excuse to, st- to just stay on the sidelines and let Snyder play. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I, like I said, that's if, such a questionable call. Um, I, I don't know if he's afraid of a co- quarterback controversy, which it's happened before in his in his tenure a couple times, actually. We've seen it with Gary Nova. We've seen it with Chase Dye. We've seen it with Tom Savage, who was a freshman All-American, had a quarterback controversy at one point in his sophomore year. Um, so I don't know if he's afraid of that going on again. And they did it last year with rotating back and forth and back and forth. And, um, I, I'm, I'm just reading like some people in the chat. They're like, yeah, you, this is Gavin's first full year, but I'm like, yeah, but this is Gavin's third year. Like Gavin has to figure it out by now. And it's, it's either make or break at this point. Otherwise a freshman is going to come in and AJ Sarace, who I think is damn good. And yep. might end up taking his spot next year. At this point. Could do it. Then again, you know, if he sides with the veteran, uh, but still Bitch, you're right. Yeah. It's, uh, it's getting questionable, though. I think you have to start figuring it out if you're Gavin. I know uh, they're playing protect football because they're just going to run the ball a ton, but this, when the run game's not working, you can't trust him to win you the game. And that's just the unfortunate truth. You know, I'm not a, a, an Evan Simon fan. I just want – I've Neither said it I. before. I don't think he's he, – I don't even yeah. think from what I've seen in his career that he's even an FBS quarterback. But when any quarterback does what he did – and the other guy is just not hitting anything. And it's the clear reason why this offense is doing nothing. And you're basically just going just gonna to kind of quit for this kid, the game, because you're not coming back with this kid the way he's playing. And then you just don't make the switch. I, don't, I just, it just, yeah, it, it's frustrating. Now, we'll see what he says in the post game, and, and, and even in a few days when he talks about it again, I'm sure. But I don't know. I just... Yeah, I think, he's got to go to Simon. You have to. Yeah, I think the biggest issue here, too, is that their backup last year, or not last year, two years ago, Cole Schneider <laughs> played against Wisconsin this year. And he put up 26 of 41 for 194 and two touchdowns. It's, that's I mean, they're, yeah, be- they're, they're better numbers than what Gavin had. And yeah. Gavin's in year three. I know Cole's probably in year four or five now, but. It's uh, it's just tough. It is tough to see. I know G- Gavin just doesn't seem like he's ready, but there's no one else that's better. So I don't really know if you have another option at this point. Hey, but if, I, if he's not going to make the switch right then and there, he's never making the switch. Yeah. No, this season, I think it's Gavin all the way at this point. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but, yeah, that uh, – and I'll tell you what, too. I mean, um, they're, they're – look, I give – I will give him enough – credit towards the end of the game because he made some plays at the end of the game but it was over by then um he could have went into the tanks the one thing he hasn't done yet which is good he hasn't like he hasn't had these like mol you know big turnover games that's the only credit that i give him so far this year is that even when he's erratic at least he's not throwing three or four picks and a half or something like that and just completely ending any chance that they have to win the game. I mean, hey, look, you know what? They score a touchdown, four minutes to go. Maybe they get the ball back. Maybe they score again. All right, you know, something could happen. So I give him enough of that credit. But um, it's it's not happening fast enough. And if and I don't think it's going to happen. I just I don't see it. I don't see how he's all all of a sudden magically over the last five or six games of the season going to turn into the quarterback that we've all been waiting for. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And people just keep pointing to stats and they're like, hey, like I'm looking now, Gavin doesn't suck. He has 10 total touchdowns, two turnovers. That's pretty good. Competition. I'm sorry, but you have to look at the competition. You played Wagner. Ugh. Uh, you played Virginia Tech, who's god awful this year. Uh, Northwestern uh, for the first time head coach. The first time head coach that's never coached in the Power Five level before. Yep. Um, who are, they actually look pretty good now in week five. Um, mind you, Ben Bryant's hurt there, but whatever. And then Temple, like Temple's not a good G5 either. It's against bad comp. Gavin looks pretty solid. 
against good comp, Gavin looks questionable, and that's that's really just how it how it's been working so far, or how it's I'm, looking so far. It, it's frustrating because I don't believe that anything has changed with what we've been saying over the last week or so that Rutgers looks like they should, and even after this game, they should be a bowl team this year. That's that's not what it's about. I mean, they still have a, these games coming up that they should take advantage of as long as Gavin doesn't play as bad as he did in the first half in this game. They, sh- I mean, look, we we all we all can all see how bad Michigan State and Indiana are, and if you, I, I, I still refuse to believe that we're gonna do a post game show after a loss against one of those two teams because we're pretty frustrated now and if we if we have to come on this on 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 the channel and talk about a loss to either one of those teams then we have some serious issues yeah um before i go into my uh my little rant um shout out to p mata poisset uh for the donation appreciate that man uh i don't think you had a question but uh yeah i appreciate that one uh just looking at the chat there's in is it one guy, Jake Gillen, says, uh, do you think the run game put us in a situation where we have to rely on Gavin too much? 100%. The run game was absolutely trash again. Terrible. Under under three yards of carry. Your starter had two yards of carry. John, Sean Benjamin looked better but still struggled. And then Sam Brown doesn't come in until the yeah. third quarter. The most wild thing I've ever seen. Fourth again. quarter, I think, was actually. Um, if he's healthy, he's got to be out there. He's your best back when healthy by far. Aaron Young comes in, you don't use him as a running back at all. You just use him as a as a pass catcher and a blocker at times. But it's like, come on, like you gotta use these guys. You have a stable of running backs. So it's just like you, you gotta be able to do something other than 2.9 yards per carry. And m- mind you, that 2.9 is a little skewed because that's we're counting uh Gavin's rushing. Oh, yeah. If we're not counting Gavin's rushing and we're just gonna go back to the running backs, it's 12 attempts for 29 yards. Yeah. That is brutal. Yeah. And that's so th- yeah, they're so exactly right. And, but that is why I still believe that the positive is, especially after, after this game and in the Michigan game is, is that we are, are, are coaching and, and, and some of our recruiting now is starting to put our program into position where if we have a quality quarterback, mm-hmm. we're going to start winning a lot of games. That's yeah. the one thing that's holding us back because, yeah, you're trying to put too much pressure on whims at, you're right, but the fact is, that's that's kind of also playing into what we're saying is that you can't put it all on Wimsat because he's not good enough to put it all on him. He needs yeah. the running game. I, I can't trust Gavin Wimsett's arm to win you a football game. I just don't think it's it's feasible, especially when you're down from behind, coming from behind when you're what was it when uh ten nothing and then uh not ten nothing, seventeen nothing yeah. And then it's like 17-6. Like, I still don't – I'm not confident he can get you over that hump, that a double-digit uh, deficit. Well, he put us in that 17 well, yeah. deficit. Yeah. That's, that's so, other uh, and by the way, that was frustrating too. As soon as Wisconsin scores a touchdown, boom, we go down the field. That drives me crazy. <laughs> it's like, why did you wait until you go down two scores to all of a sudden now you, you get into a rhythm? I mean, you know, it's like, come on, is that a coincidence or is that just, oh, now we got to get going here? It's, I can't make a mistake. It's three nothing. I got, you know, we got to play like cautious football. Up oh, now we're down two. Let's go. So, yeah. It, it, as weird as it sounds, a momentum thing, maybe just because you're like, oh, shit, like we're down. We got to score here. Like we got to get down the field. And they I don't just know what boom, it is. boom, 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 yeah. down the field. Like, what, wait, what the hell? Like this offense does have life. Okay. Like yeah. <laughs> score. Pick six. And it's like, all right. <laughs> yeah, there goes that idea. Yeah. But yeah, uh, not having strong in it to the end of the game. We don't see Brown with a touch the entire game. So crazy. I don't know what we're doing here. He must be. You, you, so one thing, is, it's either one or the other. Either he's nowhere near 100% or I need an explanation of why. If he's not 100%, touches. do not put him in there to pass block then. There's no reason. Because Kyle Monangai's, Monangai is a better pass blocker overall, and there's no question about that one. Um, we've seen him absolutely stuff guys at that almost yes, at the line of yes. so that's just that's stop playing him if he's if sam brown's not healthy if you're not going to run with him just don't even put him out there at that point um but yeah i gotta give a shout out to the defense so the defense kept him in this game for as long as they, they did yeah it's just it's, uh, it's similar to last year it's like this defense is phenomenal this year i think the defense is even better than last year and they did great today flip dixon all over the field Igbenosin, mind you with a couple mistakes early but managed to bounce back 
Robert Longerbeam's a lockdown corner. Max Melton had a good game. Aaron Lewis even had some good moments. Isaiah Iton and Ahana, too, I was complaining about in the early uh, early snaps of the game, bounce back to him. That defense as a whole is is really good and should be winning, keeping you in games enough for this offense just to score a little bit, just to win. It, it, it's a shame because they, they played lights out today, in my opinion. Torre had a nice game. Torre, yeah, I didn't mention him. Yep, Bailey with two sacks. And just I tell you, the one thing that killed killed us was – and I'm shocked that Mordecai only actually had 50 yards rushing. It looked like he had like yeah. 80 to 90 yards rushing. He just killed us. Like, I don't know how many first downs he got uh, from – that's what I'd like to – I'd like to know how many first downs he got because it looked like he, he, he might have got three or four, st- four, four first downs on his own, which really – and it's like, since when all of a sudden is Tanner Mordecai some sort of uh, athlete that he's running the ball and picking up first downs like this? So – Whatever the case may be, that kind of was a backbreaker several times. Yeah, I don't know what it is between Rutgers defense and mobile court, read option quarterbacks. Um, they just they they get them every time, and uh, he he should have had technically more yards because college does count sacks against rushing yards. So okay, that's that's the bigger issue that's there. Two sacks is. probably okay. uh put them pretty ugly in terms right. of yardage. We still had eleven for fifty. Like that's still pretty damn good. Like. And I think that's an issue with Wimsett. We saw him at times today, and he actually broke open for that one big 21-yard rush, but he needs to do that more often. And there's times where they have the mesh run designed, and he should just tuck it and run. And he doesn't. Yeah. He hit Manangai, and Manangai runs into two Ooh. linemen, three yeah. linemen, and three-yard gain. And it's like, <laughs> I know. It's like, tuck and it's run. Like, like, you're, you're, so you're, you're making a decision, and then, and then he decides, and then the decision he makes is like the wrong decision. It's like, well, what are you waiting so, for so long to make the wrong decision? Mm-hmm. So it's true. I don't want to, you know, I'm not down there on the field, but he, yeah, yeah. instinct wise, you got to be better. That's all. Well, um, the funny thing is, we talk to him once a week, and he tells us all the time, Kirk Shiraka trusts him to make the calls there, like make your decision. Like it's, it's your game. You're the quarterback. You, you have to make the call right then and there. And he's just not making the call. It seems like so. And, uh, yeah. You know, maybe I'm thinking about the, not having Simon in, uh, for whims that could have a lot to do with whims at because of the fact that they're, they're just completely different quarterbacks. Yeah. And if you let Simon play, you're you're basically you're looking at your game plan or the the what you have and you're going well i gotta throw out like half of this stuff because i can't do it with having simon and so now we gotta start running some sort of plays that we didn't practice for this week so if i want to give them an excuse about why they don't stick with simon instead of going to whimsat when whimsat's medically cleared to play maybe that has something to do with it but again uh i don't agree with it uh and uh yeah there was just Unfortunately, just too many negative things to, to talk about in this game. That's frustrating. And yeah. It's frustrating, too, because, again, as we said, this is not a great Wisconsin team. Yeah, well, two things. Number one, Evan Simon rushed for 930 yards as a senior in high school. So that, the whole narrative that he can't be mobile like Gavin is out the window right then and there. I'd like to see it then, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, th- I don't think you really have to change much in the playbook. Um, I, is he as mobile as Gavin? No, of course not. Sure. Gavin's a better athlete overall, no question about it. But – I do think Evans were not too far off as a runner or as a mobile QB too. But um, the other thing with Gavin that drives me absolutely nuts and the biggest reason it drives me nuts, it's today specifically, and it was the non-targeting targeting call. Yeah. He needs to slide feet first. I don't know if the kids never played baseball before or anything, <laughs> yeah. but you got to go feet first. When you go head first, you're asking for it. Not, I'm not saying he deserved it, but sure. like you, when you do that, you're, you're going to get hit like that and yeah. it's going to hurt. Like, Oh, you're going to fumble one of the two. So like, you got to slide feet first. Like, I, I don't know why or no one's taught him that. Cause this is like the fifth or sixth time. And me and Mike have said on our pod multiple times, this kid needs to learn to slide feet first. It's driving, driving me nuts, driving Mike nuts. It's driving, it's driving everyone nuts. <laughs> uh, it's it, you can practice it. So I'm not sure why they haven't done that. Maybe they have, and he just, he's out there and he, and he just, he, 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 he can't do it. So, yeah. And he doesn't have much time. He's got a couple more years left. It looks like. And then he's going to yeah. hopefully take his diploma and, and, and get a good job somewhere because he ain't playing quarterback in the NFL. That's for sure. <laughs> not at this rate. No, no. it's not, look, not looking too hot for him. No. So on to Michigan State. And again, the schedule, the way that it is, you know, the, just again, this is why I'm going to sit back and try to be positive because it wasn't a blowout. Uh, 
they're not really again with the pick six just changing the entire game mm -hmm. if that doesn't happen i mean this is this is a game totally that they could have game. taken yeah and so positively speaking regarding that if they just continue to play the good football and they don't give up 95 yard pick sixes then you should win the next two games and go bowl eligible because you better win the next game and go bowl eligible because if you don't you're going to be in big trouble because i'm not sure who you're going to beat the rest of the way maybe iowa maybe maybe um i did other thing that's kind of hurting them a little bit is like wisconsin's coming off a bye came off a bye into this game michigan state who also just fired their head coach a couple weeks ago is coming off a bye yep and getting into next week's game so they'll have they'll be healthy and ready to go plus a bye week for an interim head coach is probably the biggest thing that they could ever have in terms of that program right now so that's huge mark d'antonio's back too so uh i know he's one of the assistant coaches not the interim head coach but something to watch because they did put up a decent effort against iowa a week ago out in kinnick so it's it's oh, gonna be gonna tough come. they're gonna thing. they're gonna yeah. they're gonna be flying yeah so i mean if i, I do think indiana's a i don't want to say guaranteed win but it's about as guaranteed of a win as you could say so that would be five uh wins on the year and then after that i it's michigan state or bust that's that's pretty much it in my opinion yeah, if they beat Michigan State at home and go to Indiana with the chance to become bowl eligible, and <laughs> they better close that deal. So, uh, yeah, I can't see that. I mean, what, so and it's homecoming too this week. That's helpful. That should be very helpful. Yeah. So should be a good crowd. Do you, what time? Uh, game? Uh, a noon game. Noon game. Noon kick. Uh, Big Ten Network. Uh, homecoming and family weekend. They're calling it. I know. Um, Ironically, a lot of my family will be there. Um, we're all Rutgers alum, so should be a should be a pretty good crowd overall. But if if you won that Wisconsin game, it's oh. like a totally different crowd going yeah. into this one. Yeah, it's. But I mean, you, you get a wake up call if you're Gavin Wims at, mm -hmm. and we'll see how he responds. And he's responded so far. He, he's done a good job this year of responding. He's better than he was last year. Uh, and, and it's not like Michigan State doesn't have some talent. Uh, it's just the fact that oh, they, they have a much do. better coaching staff than they do right now. They got an interim coach who doesn't deserve to be there right now. And if we can't beat Michigan State in their in their situation, uh, that's uh, that's not a good sign. Yeah, apparently they're starting a new quarterback too. Um, they're replacing their starting quarterback during the bye week. Uh, Noah Kim is going to be replaced by redshirt freshman uh, Caden Hauser. Okay. I don't know That's a whole scary. lot about him, but an unknown quarterback can never be is no, never a good thing. No. That's scary. Yeah, and as we know with Rutgers and backup quarterbacks, it's not always the best uh, best outcome. So we'll, we'll have to just wait and see what he could do. But um, I'm not super familiar with him. I think he's a California kid. Well, yeah, they actually home. played at St. John Bosco, so one of the best <laughs> public schools in the or not public uh, private schools in the country. How is uh, Michigan State's run defense so far? Because uh, that's that's going to be the trick is uh, is how good Michigan State can. Because as we saw, without the running game going, put everything on whims at. Not 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 good. So. Yeah, I said it. Um, I said it in our prediction piece actually because I think there Wisconsin was only giving up ninety something yards per game, and people were like, "Yeah, but they gave up a hundred something the week before." And I'm like, "Yeah, but the Rutgers run game is a different run game than this run game. Like it's." Completely different. And look what they did. They held Manungai to, what, 30 yards? They held um, – no, 16, 16 yards. They held um, Manungai and Benjamin to 29 total yeah. yards. Like, it's, it's tough. You know, so that, and, and remember we talked about it, how simple the, 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 uh, the, the game plan is in their running game. It's everything pretty much is down the middle. It's run. It's it's it's, you know, whims at like you said. He's he, he has the opportunity to decide: Am I going to give it to Monongai or am I going to hold it? That that's it. That's that's the offense. Now and again, this is why it could work against weak competition. But when you step up against better competition, if you don't have the line of scrimmage for that kind or the dynamic running back which we do uh, you know again minnesota had a pretty damn good running back uh ibrahim to, to 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 rely on but they had a better offensive line than we do so you go up against these better defensive fronts like michigan and, and wisconsin and so forth it, it, you just keep running that same style of offense 
it just doesn't work as easily. And that's where you need to be a little bit more creative. Uh, or again, you have to rely on your quarterback to have a good game. And uh, Rutgers did not get that out of Wimsett today. So Yeah, lo looking at the rushing defense numbers, and I believe that's for this year, um, going into today, uh, Michigan State has a better rushing defense attack, rushing defense than Wisconsin. <laughs> so, oh, okay. Yeah. And that's uh, even that's yards per. No, that's uh, to, uh, total yards per game. So yeah, yards per two actually. Yards Michigan per two. State okay. Giving up three point five. Mich uh, Wisconsin's giving up three point eight. Let's so. see who did they play. Well, Washington is more of a passing team, but they did have seven hundred and thirteen yards in the game. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Maryland also more of a passing team. Mm -hmm. So you know, I mean, um, Iowa maybe. Yeah, well, yeah, it's true. Well, Iowa, yeah, well, their offense is terrible. Yeah, so it's something. All right, something I mean, it's uh, look, it's better than who they faced besides Wisconsin, definitely. True. Well, in Michigan, yes. it's a Big Very Ten true. defense, so it's 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 an and that's what Michigan State's usually good at. I mean, they're they're usually good at the line of scrimmage. That's what they're. Mm -hmm. That's their M.O. is, yeah. you know, being a physical football team. And mm -hmm. we're going to need Gavin Wimsat to play better next week. That's for sure. Yeah, 100%. Uh, a couple other things from today's game, just takeaways on my part at least. Reggie Sutton, right tackle, played a lot. Um, really? Pre yeah, previously we were told – he didn't come until I think the third quarter. Okay. Uh, mid, mid to late third quarter. Uh, previously we were told his knee injury was so bad that he wasn't going to yeah. ever be – and contributor again then he got in the field last week versus wagner got a couple snaps late everyone was excited greg said uh in his post game presser last week uh something like hey like he's like you sure you want to do this like you, you sure like you could just kind of go off into the sunset type of thing like you're, you're good like you, you don't want to really risk anything and he uh he said no i want to go out there and play i want to and greg obviously was his motto he's like he just kept chopping he kept chopping and then today he kept me putting significant snaps at right tackle now the interesting part about that to me at least, is the fact that Kamar Missouri was your right tackle. Reggie Sutton before this season was pretty much always a guard yeah. for Rutgers. So if you're having issues at the guard, you would think Reggie just slides in the guard spot, no problem. That's telling me that they have an issue with the right tackle. Like when Needham went down, I, I don't think they trust Missouri enough. So they're like, hey, Sutton, like if you're good enough, just go out right tackle. See what we could do. And I, I wouldn't be shocked if we saw him again next week because he seemed like he played a lot of snaps. Interesting. So. That's definitely one takeaway. Other takeaway, punting, I don't know. It's not Adam Korsak. That's just. Uh, he was off to such a good start, too. Yeah. We, we, they miss Adam Korsak more than anyone. Um, he was able to move the field, flip the entire field. He was kicking 70-yard punts, which Appleby did, a, what, a week ago, two weeks ago, 70-yard punt. And then today he kicks a 38-yarder, and I'm like, Jesus. Yeah, like, in your own I, I end zone. It. Yeah. It's windy, I get it, but, like, you still got to do better than that. He muffed one, it looked like. I don't know if it was on the, the long snapper, if it was on him, it was on one of the two. Um, where you know, Ashton team muffed it because he managed to get it off somehow, which was kind of impressive in its own right. And then uh, that's – actually, that's kind of really it. The, the now, defense, what happened on the, right? on the missed extra point? Because it looked like everything was discombobulated from the start. Yeah. But they never I, said the, what happened. The snap was low, I know that. But Appleby was able to maintain it a little bit and I don't still think that was it. hold it. I, yeah. But if you saw Patel, like he like took a step forward. Exactly. And said, oh, yes. It looked yet. like oh. yeah. It looked like he was expect. Everybody was expecting the, the ball to be you know hiked at a certain mm -hmm. time, and it wasn't. And then it was, and that screwed everything up. Yeah, and then you just see Shiano with the face palm, and it's like that's just that's how this day is going, and that's it's just bad. I don't know if it's bad luck or just something. And people are gonna be on our boards just complaining about the fact that there's no special teams coordinator. Technically, no, there's not a special teams coordinator, but there is a special teams coach in several of them, too. So you can't blame that. I mean, you might be able to blame coaching because the long snapping has been questionable. The punching has been questionable. The kicking has been solid with Patel, but minus that extra point. But it's, uh, it is it is an issue. Special teams, there's no been, there's no, been no punt returns. Oh, if yeah. you're not going to – I don't know what's going on back there. Mr. Fair Catch. I, yeah, I'm I'm okay with some of them, but others it's like you have like a 15 to 10 yard gap. Like <laughs> at least you're so versatile there as Rashad Rochelle. Do something. Yeah, break a tackle. Who knows? And then uh, the one kick return right before the end of the first half, I think it's four seconds left. He catches it and he like tiptoes the sideline. I'm like, dude, just let it go out of bounds. Like common sense. Yeah, yeah. 
this it's not their best showing this year no question so yeah, no, yeah, not at all uh but I, I i'll i'll give shiano a year to fix it because we know how much it, it, it's important to, to his to his uh, game plan and um we'll give him we'll give him an opportunity i mean they, they had they, they breaking in a, a young kicker and a new punter and but yeah. it, it's not just that though. like you, like you were going over it's, it's not just that it's uh yeah there's, there's a lot more nothing to it. out of the return game and they're not coming yeah. close to blocking anything no not even close uh maybe closer but not not <laughs> close though. Yeah. like they're i don't know where this uh this old school shiano special teams unit has been yeah. but it's not there this year so far especially because max Melton's blocked what what three in his career four in his career like what what's going on with him i don't know can he get there and get to the defender but or not the defender the punter so i i, I don't know i'd like to maybe do some research there and find out like who at, 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 during his because he's gone back and, and and reunited with a lot of coaches he knows i mean who did he have mm -hmm. a, spe a certain special teams coordinator at the time when they were doing really special things if so get that guy back i don't know what the situation yeah. was but yeah, it has to get better. There's no question, yeah. especially I now know. while they Jones for offense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100. percent I know the current uh, the current guy is a guy that works for Shiano, actually from 05 to 07. Um, he actually was UConn special teams coordinator from 2018 to 2021, and then joined back at Rutgers as a QC in 2022. And uh, he, he's a big reason why Adam Adam Korsak was able to win the right guy. It's a big reason why they looked good on special teams last year. I don't know what's going on this year, but yeah. It's a it's an absolute mess, and if if you're just gonna fair catch it, like put someone else back there. I want to see some versatility. I want to see someone that can actually maybe change the side of the field. We've seen Janarian Grant do it over the years. We've seen um, Aaron Krukshank do it in previous years. Like I know they might not have that guy, but is Rochelle? If the Rochelle is that guy, then let him run. Let him yeah. go. Is he scared? Is this his call? Is this the special teams coordinator's call? Like I don't know. It's a uh, a lot, of, a lot of big ifs, uh, a lot of big question marks on on that side of the ball. Yeah, they could definitely, and, and I guess Benjamin's never done it then, right? I, we haven't heard Benjamin no. in his career. If, so. if anyone, it'd be uh, Dremel maybe, but he's your starting slot, so oh, you don't yeah. really want to do we that. We won't risk that now. Um, Duquay has done it at the at the D two level. But, I mean, yeah. uh, Chris Long's done it, but he's injured. Um, Aaron Young. He, he saw some snaps today. Oh, if he's yeah. healthy and he's your running back three, you have a stable of them. Just throw him back there. That'd be nice. Yep. Got to do something different because the buy doesn't come until after the two cupcakes. So certainly hope you've uh, you, you've secured that six wins before that buy when you can maybe fix a few things. But it would be nice to get Chris Long back too. Not sure when that's going to happen. But at, at this point, I, I think I said it in our – our live stream uh, show during the game. It's if he's not back by next week, I think you just say red shirt. What is he, how many years does he have left? Uh, that's a good question. I think Chris, Chris Long has probably two. But I don't know. He might have red shirt, but if you can get a medical red shirt on this year, I mean, why not? Yeah, especially if you go bowl eligible, that would be. Oh yeah, of course. No brainer. Uh, 2020 didn't count. 2021, one year. 2022, two years. He played in one game this year, so he could have potentially two more years if uh, he redshirts this season. Okay. So. Uh, I also I have to bring this up too before we go, and that is the peacock thing. Now I don't have peacock, so <laughs> I'm I do what I usually do at these at these games. You know, I never watch them at the beginning. Never. Mm -hmm. I always watch them. You know, I DVR them all, and, and I usually start watching the games half hour in, 45 minutes. In. So I come up to my YouTube. I open it up. There's no game. I'm like, where the fuck's the game? And I'm like, what's going on here? So I'm, I, all right, where to watch the game? Peacock. Ah, oh, screw it, man. I got to know if I got to pay for another service. But I, I, whatever. I'll do it for a month. So I looked. All right, six bucks. Fine. I'll buy that. I bought it. So I'm watching the game. And I get caught up, I step away for a little while, I come back, and the thing just is telling me I gotta like start from scratch and I gotta kind of work it. I, I can't just re I can't just stop it and start it and ask it to go back like in YouTube. So, all right, well, that's a pain in the ass. Then at the end of the game, when after they scored the touchdown, it, I had caught up. So I'm like, all right, I'm caught up. Let me take care of a few other things. We gotta prepare for the show. I come back and I try to turn it on. And it's saying that the, the game time had run out on me. 
And I'm like, what are you talking about? Game time run out of me. I, I, I went all the way. It said th three, th three hours and 30 minutes, whatever it was. And then, and then, and it goes, and then I went to, I went back to the homepage to where it said where the game was and it said game over, whatever. So I clicked it. It wouldn't let me watch the game anymore. I missed the last four minutes of the game. I never seen it. I mean, really, I don't know how. It, it was a, it was a mess. We managed to get I, that's my fault. I probably should have sent you the link, but we managed to get it on our end and put it on a live stream for working for as long as it was. Uh, I thought it came out pretty well, but it the, the overall the announcers were awful. The camera angles were awful. The yes. uh, the scoreboard had like a digital like pocket digital clock on there. Um, it was if he cocks just a mess, man. Like it was just it was brutal. Not one announcer could pronounce the correct name of any player on the team. It was like, oh, there goes Kyle Manunga. And it's like, wait, what? No, like number one, that wasn't even him. That was Benjamin, first off. But um Gavin Wimps Wimsey or something like that. They were they were just all over the place. Um absolutely. I thought early on they were Wisconsin announcers, to tell you the truth. They were like they 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 sounded like it. They're like, well, why are you why are they talking like that? Like, you know, like if, if there are Wisconsin announcers, obviously it changed, but yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're supposed to be NBC for crying out loud. I mean, what the heck? Yeah, they're not too hot so far. Um, but uh, shout out to George Forbes for the uh, the super chat in our in our chat. Uh, appreciate that, man. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, I guess shoot them in here now before we start wrapping up. Yeah, uh, well, odds on the game next week. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, Michigan State home game, Rutgers. Michigan State coming off a bye. I think Vegas is going to favor Michigan State here. Really? Yeah. You do? I, I don't think it's going to be much, though. I'm, I'm going to go with like two and a half, three, maybe. I'm going to say the exact opposite. Yeah, that's fair. I think yeah. the home crowd might actually factor into it. Could be a, it could be a push. It could be close. It could be. I, yeah, they, they're underdog to Michigan State with the interim coach, the way everything's falling apart yeah, for them. I'm going to be a little bit like, uh, I, I hope so. Don't get me wrong. I, I hope I so. Mean, hey, it could flip flop again real quick. Remember, uh, what was it, three weeks ago? It was like 30 point spread, and then it dropped down to like 21 and a half versus Michigan. Oh, was it that? Uh, okay. Is that what yeah, happened? Or, or, you know, it, it opened back to 30, 24. 30, 31 or something, I think. And it went back to 21 and then going back to 24. It was, it was like an absolute crazy spread. But yes. I, yeah, I'm going to go two and a half with Michigan State. I feel like off the bye, Vegas is probably going to favor them a little bit. Well, keep this in mind too now. Rutgers has not lost a spread this year. That's true. Vegas likes teams that don't lose spreads, they give them a lot of credit. So we'll see how much yeah. credit they give him, but we'll see. I, I hope you're right. I, I, I'd yeah. love to be a home dog to that crappy team. Well, I mean, people might just jump on that and make it a fucking <laughs> yeah. push, push in seconds, and all of a sudden Rutgers is favored like two hours later. It's like, right. hey, what happened? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's not that but, big of a game for me to rush to the, the, the booths of a sports book. Yeah. We go, oh, i got to take care of Rutgers at plus three against Michigan State. There you go. Save yeah. my money. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, they don't give me a whole lot of confidence after because when you have to rely on Gavin Wimsat to make you money, it's uh, it's, you know, after that performance oh, today, oh. it's uh, it's one of those things where you go, why would I do such a thing? Why would I invest? Why would I throw my money away on on relying on Gavin Wimsat? Yeah, so, talk about um, a backdoor cover today. Oh, oh my yeah. god, that, that late fumble in opposing territory, and it's oh, like, I, oh. I, I, I missed it. Oh yeah, you I, you didn't see it. I forgot about that. Um, yeah. yeah, so basically, uh, Toure forced a fumble. With like, I want to say, what was it? Three minutes left, two and a half minutes left on like the 15, 20 yard line, and that just there's your backdoor cover. They were able to score real quick. Oh, was uh, you know what? I, I did, I did get the uh, the the uh, one where he missed it, the drive before when he missed Dremel wide open. That oh, was another yeah. great pass. <laughs> Nowhere near him. Well, he just, he just puts it right there in Dremel. He might have scored a touchdown. And yeah, uh, he just throws it like fifteen yards over his head. So completely different game at that point. Yep. But, that way, but missed it, waited another five minutes before they scored it. And then that was too late. So, mm -hmm. yeah. All so. right. Well, anyway, again, like I said, it was a really bad, uh, it was definitely a lot to be upset about. No question. Uh, but it wasn't a loss against an inferior opponent, which is why the next two weeks are critical, uh, for this program, this season, and if they can uh, wrap up, let's, let's take obviously this one by one. 
Michigan mm-hmm. State next week at noon. We'll be on the air pretty much around the same time, maybe a little bit later, because I, I could imagine yeah. we might be on later than 345 with you guys uh, being at the game and all. So Of course, yeah. Um, um, it's it's that parking lot traffic, so <laughs> I have to determine yeah. what the score is at the end of the game. If it's close, then I'm, I'll stay to the end. If it's not close, I'm going to drive home real quick and get on this, this post-game pod. Yeah, and then uh, it better be a good one. So yeah, uh, hopefully. it's Michigan State. And, of course, your next show on the channel will be when, Monday or Tuesday? Um, We usually do Tuesdays just because we want to get Greg Shannon's presser, which doesn't really happen um, until, like, a late afternoon Monday. So I'm probably okay. going to say uh, check us out on Tuesday on this Rutgers football channel. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. It's free. It's easy. It's simple. It helps us provide more content, provide more shows, and all that other good stuff. So. Uh, definitely hit the subscribe, subscribe button down below and check us out on ruckers.rivals.com. We have the number one most popular Rutgers forum on the web, a ton of content, recruiting stuff. Um, I'm sure we'll have a visitor list at some point next week. Uh, and we'll have a Michigan State um, beat writer on as well. Yeah. So. And uh, college basketball coming soon. So. Yes, sir. November 6th. Only uh, a little less than a month now. Awesome. Yeah. Can't so. wait for that to get started. And, it's going to be uh, fun. Uh, are we officially off the, uh, the the Dylan Harper watch? Is it now like kind of just let us know whenever you know? Is it pretty much like that? It's funny you say that because there's there's some rumors. There's some rumors he might come next weekend when all the other commits are coming to campus. Oh. Like, so East Bailey, Bryce Dorch, Lathan Somerville will all be on campus next weekend um, for official visits. Uh, Dylan Grant's working in something too. On coming, oh, he's the fourth commit who technically took an official like a month ago. So. Okay. Not sure if he's going to make it or not as an official, but it will def. It sounds like he's definitely going to visit as an unofficial at least. And uh, the rumor is that that fifth guy might be there. Well, the fifth guy, fifth guy there is actually going to be Trey McKinney, who's number thirteen in twenty twenty five overall. Oh, so he's a big name too. So keep okay. eye on. But but there's a rumor Dylan might be there too. So that's just let's just wait and see what happens. Well, you'll be sure to let us know uh, when when we wrap up the Michigan State game next week. Uh, of course and hopefully it'll, yeah let's uh, hope it's one more win away from uh, bowl eligibility so rich appreciate it of course as always thanks for letting me host this on your channel yeah, and um, uh, let's talk to you next week sounds good